derivative of function. So derivative is what we were going to do the first semester all along. So we're going to talk about derivatives. I told you we're going to do derivatives on the first half. And then second semester, we will do integrations today. So we're going to do, we're going to actually start and call this a derivative. Okay. So derivative, okay, we have known so far that the instantaneous slope or the tangent line of the slope of the tangent line is going to be limit as h goes to zero f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And this is what we were told, okay, we were told. So this is also called, the slope of the tangent line is also called the derivative. Okay, so remember when I talked about this function one this week, I told you earlier that this guy is kind of cumbersome because for every single point in a function, you had to do this. Okay, so now we're going to give you a new definition. A new definition of a derivative, okay, is going to be limit as h goes to zero, we're just going to call this, instead of f of a plus h, we're going to go x plus h and f of x. We're going to call this a derivative, and it is notated as such, f prime x. So f prime, the derivative of f of x is going to be defined in this fashion. So if you read it, it says, the derivative of the function f with respect to the variable x is the function f prime whose value at x is, and this is what it's telling me, okay? So this is the different, this is the derivative. So let's see if we can use this, okay? So let's see if we can find or differentiate, find the derivative of f of x equal to x cubed. And this is example one. Let's see if we can do it x cubed. So wherever this is, I would put cubed, right? So we're going to go ahead and this is going to be limit. As h goes to zero, we're going to have x plus h cubed minus x cubed over h, okay? So let's see how this works. So we go ahead and do this, we're gonna get what? We're gonna do this, so we're gonna have limit as h goes to zero, do this, so we're gonna have x cubed plus three x squared h, three x h squared plus h cubed minus x cubed over h. So this and this goes away. And as you can notice, each of these terms have an H in there. So we can go, let's just go ahead and this H goes away. One of these goes away and one of these goes away. So what do we have left? We have three X squared plus three X H plus H squared, but H goes to zero. So this guy goes to zero and this guy goes to zero. All I have left is this guy. 3x squared. So we're going to get 3x squared. Okay. That is the derivative of f of x is equal to x cubed. Okay. So, in other words, if I wanted to know the, since this is what we got, if I want to know what the slope of the tangent line or the derivative for that matter, at x equals to one, I would say f prime one is equal to three times one squared, and it would be three. In other words, I don't have to go to each separate point and plug it in and find out what the slope of the tangent line or the derivative is. I can just use it as the whole function and just go ahead and plug in the numbers, okay? So that's that. Let's go to page 102. In page 102, in the middle, it gives us an alternative derivative de uh, definition of the derivative. Okay. So the first one that we just learned, the first one we just learned was what? F prime x is equal to limit as h goes to zero, 
we get h f of x plus h minus f of x. This is what we just learned. And now they're going to give you an alternative one. And that's going to look like this, f of a plus h minus f of, oh, f of x, I'm sorry, f of x minus f of a over x minus a as x approaches a. Okay, so this is an alternative one. But again, this one is for a certain point, the point of at a, right, at point a, okay, all right? So let's see how this works. Let's do example number two. Differentiate f of x equal to root x using the alternate definition. So we're gonna use this definition here. So f prime of x is equal to limit as h approaches zero, oh, no, I'm sorry, x approaches a. As x approaches a, we're going to go f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Okay, so the trick here is to being able to recognize this guy, or if you want to, you can just go top and bottom if you want to. You can go ahead and multiply root x plus root a root x plus root a. So I'm going to multiply this guy top and bottom. What that accomplishes is that over here on the top, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get this squared minus this squared. So it's going to be x minus a, and that guy is going to cancel out with this guy down here. All you're going to have left is this guy here, right? But x is going to go to root a, so I'm going to get root a plus root a over 1. In other words, I'm going to get 1 over 2 root a. Okay? That's what I'm going to get. Okay? So let's go back to the notation. Okay, the notation we learned, and what I just told you was the f prime of x. f prime of x is also notated by, this is also called a df dx. Okay? This is read as df of dx not df over dx. This is not, this is not a division of symbol here. This is a df, so it's where we're differentiating, where we're taking the derivative of f with respect to x, okay? So this is not, again, this is not a division symbol here. This is just df of dx, okay? So on page 103, it shows you that, and this is the same as we can go y prime, okay? And we can also call this dy dx if y is equal to f of x, right? y is equal to f of x. So instead of f, I'm putting y there. Okay. Also known as d dx f of x. Okay. So the ones that have the d are the notations developed by Leibniz in Germany. The ones with a prime are developed by, were developed by Isaac Newton, okay? So that's why we have these two things. And there's also always that long drawn out debate about who is the father of calculus. Well, the truth is that both of both Leibniz and Isaac Newton developed separately on their own the, the, the same methods, okay? So that's why the notations still persist up to this day. This is back in the 1650s, 1675, somewhere around there, okay? Okay, so those are the notations of the derivative, all right? Now let's go and see if we can actually see what this means graphically. So let's see what the derivative, how that looks like graphically. So if I had a graph, that looks like, this looks a little like this, goes like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and on the bottom part, I'm gonna go ahead and try to draw, this is y is equal to f of x. I'm gonna to try to draw y is equal to f prime x, or the derivative of this function, okay? So the derivative, as we know, is going to be the slope of the tangent line. So at this point, the slope is going to be like this, 
So it's positive. But as x goes along, x goes along, it's going to be less and less positive, less and less positive until we come to this point up here. What is my slope of the tangent line up here? Anybody? Zero. It's going to be zero, right? Because it's horizontal with the x-axis. So it's going to be zero, right? So I know that at this point, my slope is going to be zero. So it's going to go through this point. I know at this point, I started with a high value, high positive value, right? And then as it went along, it became less and less positive, less and less positive, less and less positive, until it came to zero. So it's going to go down like that, right? Once it passes here, we're where are we going? We're going negative, right? We're going negative, negative, more negative, more negative, more negative to come to a point here. And then it's going to become less and less negative until I become zero. Again, I have zero here. So I know it's going to go with zero here. So I'm going to have the most negative point is going to be down here. So it's going to come all the way down to the most negative point, and that's going to go up. OK? This here is called the point of inflection. Keep this in the back of your mind because we will come back to this. This will come back. We'll come back to this. Okay, this is the point of inflection where the negative part was negative, so negative, so negative, so negative. And then it becomes less negative, less negative, less negative, less negative, back to zero. Okay, so this we call the point of inflection. So from here on, what's happening? I'm going to now become more positive, more positive, more positive, more positive as we go. So it's going to go up like that. Okay. So I'm the, yeah, come here. Make it a little smoother here if I can, I guess. Like that. Okay. So that's the one. This is what the y prime is going to look like. So in theory, we should be able to look at this and go backwards here. Okay, so that so that's we're gonna do that also. But first let's go from y to y prime. When you go from y to y prime, okay, the points that you can find immediately again are the local mins and local max. The local min and local max here where it tops out, where it bottoms out, you're gonna always have a point of zero. So I would go ahead and cry. So keep these point two points zero first, and then just go ahead and draw it in like that. Okay. So that's the relationship between the graph F and F prime. Okay. So we did that. Let's move over. And so on in example number four, we're going to go backwards. We're going to graph F from F prime on this one. They're going to give you F prime, and you're going to go ahead, go ahead and have to draw the other one. So this is example number four. Example number four, they're going to give you F prime, and F prime is given to you as this. And like this. So at this point, I am what? I am one, and this looks like a slope of negative one, and this looks like a slope of two, I'm gonna guess two, looks like two. Slope of two here. In other words, the slope, the slope here is two, okay? So let's go again. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to guess what F looks like from F prime, okay? We have these two points that we know. So it's here and here I'm gonna have a, Oops, never mind. Wrong one. <laughs> okay, so I have two, so this is two, and I have negative one. So up here, I have what? So at this point, right here, okay. On this side, I'm gonna have a constant slope of two, which means what? If the, if the slope is constant, it is a 
it's a line, right? It has to be a line, right? So I'm going to have a line that is where the m is equal to two. So m is going to be equal to two here. And over here, the m is going to be equal to negative one. Okay? Am I giving any numbers? I'm given that f of zero is equal to zero. So it goes through this point right here. Okay? But since I know it's f of f one is, is negative one, I know it's going to be a, it's going to go like that, right? And also, what do I know? I know that it's continuous, which means it has to go from here up like this, where the slope is two. Okay? Does that make sense? Can you see why this is open dot and this is open dot? Because what happens here? What is the slope of the tangent line here, right? I don't have a slope of the tangent line because it can be anything, right? Because it has a hinge there, right? So it does not exist, right? Because the limit as f of x, this is what, one, one? Limit as x approaches one from the positive side, right? What's my limit here? What's, 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 what is it? What is the derivative here? Oh, actually, we're gonna learn that later on. Never mind. don't worry about that. Okay, so again, this is where we're at. Okay, this is where we're at, okay? So let's go ahead and stop right here and see if we can start working on our homework. And we'll do the graphing of the derivative after, after our break. So we are five. All right, I'll give you about 10 minutes to work on the homework. 